Hi there. Welcome to Hand Warmers 101. This is a topic dear to my heart because I've got so much in common with some of these hand warmers. First, we're greatly misunderstood by our masters. In my case, it's she who must be obeyed. We're only appreciated when we provide comfort and ignored the rest of the time. We get misplaced a lot. We're not fed properly. We were conceived about 65 years ago and have not demonstrated any noticeable improvement since then. And most importantly, we have the potential to work well only if given a chance. And uh, that pretty much describes hand warmers in a nutshell. So here you can see an assortment of devices to try and give you some comfort when the thermometer dips. I've used all of these and pretty much settled on the ones that catalyze naphtha gas because they have more output for a given amount of weight. But if not managed properly, they can be really temperamental. So first of all, going to give you some hints on how to improve them. And then um, I found that uh, the way you use them is very important because I really misunderstood them in the beginning and um, wrecked the catalysts before I realized what I had done. So the first thing that I do to improve a hand warmer is, and I can probably illustrate that on this one, the uh, reservoir which is in this part of the hand warmer here is um, filled with cotton batten and cotton batten it uh, doesn't have a high threshold for burning and so you can see in this one where it has burnt when the catalyst head got so hot that the the cotton batten started to burn well that carbon that's in there then creates a barrier to the naphtha which is vaporizing and the fumes passing up into the catalyzer head making it very inefficient and of course uh, if your cotton catches on fire I would assume that's not very safe either so when I noticed that, I wondered about ways I could improve that. And um, the first thing I found that, although I can pull the cotton out of this Chinese peacock hand warmer, which has a head on it like that, like, oh, that's the butterfly one. Sorry, I guess that's called the butterfly, just like the peacock. On the Zippos, you've got a different problem, and that is the way <coughs> You can't get into the cotton in that one and um, there is no large of an area there to allow the fumes to pass up into the catalyzer head and for what I like to do is I like to pull that cotton batten out and I like to replace it with carbon felt. The carbon felt has a much higher burning point than the cotton and therefore you don't end up with that burnt area. It also seems to wick better and um, therefore I get a lot more performance when I do that. The other thing that I like to do is um, when the heads get uh, oxidized, so how these work is there is a platinum catalyst that's embedded in these heads and when the naphtha evaporates it reacts with the platinum that's embedded in the catalyst head creating an exothermic reaction and that's where you get all the heat so when it's time to replace those I go with a more pure form of platinum catalyst that I source aftermarket and then rebuild the heads with those so there's the first two improvements that can be made to make your hand warmer perform a little better. However, even then, what you're going to find is once you've got your hand warmer operational, it can be extinguished by the same factors that fi firefighters use which is depriving them of oxygen and another factor that can really affect them 
is when um, you cold shock them so that you stop the evaporation of the naphtha in the body. So what we'll do is illustrate how to restart them or how to get them going in the first place. And for that, what we're going to do, I like to fill them. I don't like to use these stupid little watering cans that come with them. I use the bottles that the vaping community, the e-cig users use. They have a childproof top on them and um, that's about the appropriate amount of fuel to fill one of the larger hand warmers for uh, 10 to 12 hours if I recall correctly and it's a lot easier to fill them there's no sp spillage that way so and it's got a nice little spigot head on so I fill a few of those up and put them in the top flap of my pack and then I'm not monkeying around and spilling things when the time comes. So we will use the circular butterfly and for refilling this one has got a grate that's removable and you can see because it's black underneath there that has been repacked with carbon felt. So if I were to fuel this The other good thing about measuring your fuel is then you won't have it slopping over and um, setting your hands on fire. So now you see how the fuel has spilled out over. So before I try lighting that, I'm going to clean that fuel up. And then I'll let it settle in. I may not have even put enough in there to get much evaporation going. So now you keep in mind, and this is the way that most people end up wrecking their hand warmers as soon as they get them. If you work under the misconception that you need to set this head on fire, that will result in damaging it because all the platinum will oxidize and you'll have nothing left to catalyze and create the exothermic reaction. So again, remember, we're trying to get the naphtha to evaporate up into the head, the fumes, not the naphtha itself, not the liquid. While we know in order to support evaporation, it needs to be warm, whether it's water or any other liquid. So if this is cold, if you've pulled it out of your pack, for example, it's not going to be very easy to light it. And so, thanks to Jeff Hanna, who's much more intelligent than I am, pointing out to me that it's way easier to get a hand warmer going if you take a hair dryer to it, or if your wife won't let you have access to her coveted hair dryer, then your heat gun. I tried that the first time, and um, I had trouble finding a current bush when I was out on the trail to plug the heat gun into. Luckily I did have my favorite jet flame lighter with me and even I was able to figure out that I could use it to heat the reservoir and the shoulders of the hand warmer in order to get that evaporation process going. So you just do that and then the other side go around the shoulders like so and then when you think you've got it nice and warm it doesn't take long you just gently cover over the area of the catalyst head a few times and if the reservoir is nice and warm it doesn't take long for it to get going and indeed that's the one we started with and we've already kiss that head. This one doesn't really have any fuel in it now. And what you end up with is you will, when you blow on it, you should be able to see the catalyst head glowing there. And 
that's what you want to see. When you've got that, you're good to go from that point on. Excuse, we have some production problems there in our studio. That's what I get for buying secondhand studios from Hollywood. That's the main pointers uh, to deal with um, making sure you're going to have success with making that thing run. Don't forget now if you cold shock it, you're going to get that evaporation process stopped and then at that point you won't have any luck and you'll have to relight it by sh that process that I just finished showing. So you'll get roughly just a couple of tips here then before we close off and to summarize you'll get about one hour of burn time for each two mils of fuel that you use. So one of these bottles um, if you've got a bottle that's 15 mil that you'll get about seven hours. The larger hand warmers like this and like this I believe if I recall correctly they will take about 30 mils of fuel and I believe this little guy here takes something like 20 but I might be wrong it's roughly about something like that it's, it's been a bit since I've used these because it's been warm around here. Um, the actual time of course is going to vary the more oxygen available the hotter it gets and if you slow down evaporation with your cold hands then it increases your fuel time and gives you less heat. Uh, you can use naphtha in these by the way the cheaper naphtha fuel like the Coleman gas you don't need lighter fluid especially when you're using this carbon felt because carbon felt is a filter carbon is a filter as well and I noticed it doesn't stink of naphtha as bad when I'm using the carbon felt as when I'm using the cotton so that's the thing and again back to these bottles if you use the proper amount of fuel then you won't have it all spilling out over the top because you've tried to put too much into it. So that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, just send us a note. That's it for our first 101 class at Hand Warmer University and uh, we'll probably be putting some follow-ups in here in terms of using it in the field. Uh, for example, one of my uses besides keeping my hands warm in the field is if my canister is so cold and I want to be doing some cooking up a brew but my stove is not working well because the fuel is not evaporating, I can slip my hand warmer into the bottom of this fuel canister and get this canister safely warmed up because these canisters are considered to be quite safe up to 50 degrees centigrade. They have to be designed that way so they can sit in a hot window or on a shelf in Walmart without exploding in the summer with sun shining on them. So a good rule of thumb with these canisters by the way is if they're too hot to touch which is about 50, 50 is about where you can't touch something anymore then back off on however it is you're heating them up. Would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. 